You will need to remove the two air inlet ducts, as indicated by the red arrows, as well as the front engine cover, yellow arrow, to get access to the air filter housing on top of the engine. Remove each duct by compressing them towards the engine, red arrow, and slipping them off the air inlet. With the ducts off, remove the front engine cover. It pulls up and away from the engine, yellow arrow. The cover is held on by five clips, red arrows, and will easily come off with hand pressure. Next, you will need to remove the main engine cover that also houses the air filters. It is held on by four pressure clips. You can see two at the front of the engine, indicated by the red arrows. To remove the housing, lift at the front of the engine, and once the front clips release, the rears will release as well, red arrows. The two red arrows show the valve covers on each side. We are going to begin with the right side cover. You will be able to see the valve covers on top of the heads. They hold the coils, yellow arrows. A breather hose is located just above the coils. Disconnect the three individual wiring harnesses going into each coil, as indicated by the red arrows. They simply squeeze in and pull out of the coil. You can see how filthy the valve covers are in this picture. Next, remove the crankcase breather hose from the breather cover red arrow. If the hose is fairly new, it should slide off. If the hose is original or old, there is a very good chance it will be dry and brittle and you're going to damage it and need to replace it. Do yourself a favor and order a new hose before you start this job. Use a T30 and remove each bolt from the three coil packs, red arrows. You do not need to remove the wires and boots from the plugs, but now is a good time to take them off and clean them. The boots can be very tricky to remove and will take a little patience, especially the ones at the rear of the motor. The boots are quite snug and you will need to use a 17 millimeter open end wrench to place over the end of the boot, red arrow, and using the valve cover, gently pry the boot off. If you want to make the job very easy, Pelican sells a hazard tool that is basically a specially bent open-ended 17 millimeter wrench that makes getting the boots off, red arrow, an ease, and you can use them to help seat boots when you reinstall them. Note, never try and remove the boots by pulling on the wires. You will only end up ripping the wires from the boots. Remember that while the coils are interchangeable, the wires from each coil must go to the appropriate plug. With the coil mounted on the cover, the A wire always goes to the forward plug. Next, you will need to use an E10 torque driver and remove the nine bolts holding the cover on. You may have to wiggle the cover around to get the seal to break loose to remove it. Do not hit the cover or try and jam a screwdriver between the valve cover and the head, as this can damage both, causing them to leak even more. Remove the old gasket, red arrow, and clean the area. You need to clean off all the old gasket and wherever the valve cover and head mate. Install a new gasket into the valve cover groove, red arrow, and reinstall on the head, making sure it sits flush and does not fall out, especially towards the rear of the motor. The left side of the engine is similar, with the exception of two breather hoses, red arrows, and the top rear bolt, yellow arrow, has a mount attached to it. Other than that, the procedure is the same. Installation is the reverse of removal. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.